and welcome back to the final video for geographically weighted regression for, ge for Geography 300 um, to Geographical Data Analysis at WVU. We are now looking at presenting the results of GWR. This is the most complex technique we're going to see in this course. It's also, in fact, the last technique we're going to see in the course. After um, this week after I get back, get back from virtually attending the AAG conference, we are going to shift gears into sort of the last stage of the course. This is the, and being the last and most complex technique, shouldn't be a surprise that the presentation is going to be the most complicated. So the um, presentation here, the first thing you should have figured out by watching the other videos you can have quite a few maps. One per coefficient or two Hence, if you include the map of the p-values, so you have the coefficient map, you have the p-value map, one for every, one of each for each independent variable, plus an r-squared map. The main thing, I'll just say, guide the interpretation closely. You are going to have to step the reader much more than you normally would for geographically weighted regression. It, outside of geography, outside of spatial analysis, is not as well known. People may not know what they are looking at when they see these maps. And I'll illustrate that with a case in point from work that I did with Dr. McCusker uh, several years ago now. We we're looking at the effect of a drought on whether or not a household had the ability to put food on the table basically. And what we found was, okay, who suffered from a drought. And we looked at female-headed households as one of our independent variables. And this was for the country of Niger. And we found that for much of the country in Niger, female-headed households were at a disadvantage. This is what we expected. But there is one corner of the country over in the southeast near Mali, or southwest, sorry, near Mali, where that was actually a reverse relationship. So we did our GWR, we found that it was not constant across the entire country, that relationship between drought and female-headed households, or the effects of drought, I should say. And what we found, and we talked to somebody who had worked in Niger for 20 years with USAID, and he found, and he said, oh yeah, yeah, what's going on there? is the, the reason those are female-headed households is that in that part of the country, husbands go abroad a lot and are sending remittances back. So, whereas <coughs> the dynamic of a female-headed household being at a disadvantage, it didn't work in that part of the country because they had husbands who were working elsewhere sending money back, and that meant they had a source of income insulated from the effect of the drought. Therefore, they were better off than their neighbors, where both um, the uh, man and the woman, or both the husband and the wife, were working a farm in that part of the country, 
at effect at risk of being in a problem when there's a drought. So we had to go and explain, here's the map. Here's where female-headed households are at risk. Here's where female-headed households are actually better off uh, during than their count neighbors during a drought. Now having explained that pattern, we have to now go and tell you the process by which that happens. Here's what is going on in that unexpected area where the female-headed households were at an advantage. You would have to do that when you are presenting GWR because your audience probably hasn't seen GWR before. They will need to be able to be told both what that pattern is and one or more processes that could lead to that pattern. So I will make a note here. You'll want to explain both the pattern and the process for your readers. So those are some interpretation guidelines and presentation guidelines for geographically weighted regression. As always, if you have questions, please feel free to ask in class or by email. Thank you for watching. Have a good one.